What's up guys, JS2 Sense here, and I'm gonna show you a quick and easy way to actually get your system running if you're dealing with a specific program that is causing you blue screen on Windows 10 startup, as I'm about to demonstrate here. Now my particular system, this test bench has seen a lot of hardware revision changes, a lot of OS revision changes, AMD, Intel, a lot of swaps and stuff like this happens eventually to the OS because it's dealing with so much software stacked on top of, and the registry is cluttered. I mean, lots of problems and that's exactly what we're dealing with right here. We are dealing with an old AMD Ryzen master install keeping me from being able to get in to my now Intel based test bench. Yo, dude, what are you doing? Shopping for a case for my new build. What are you looking for? I want something designed for water cooling. Fractal design to find S all the way. Check it out. Plenty of airflow, plenty of open interior for water cooling, radiator support. It even has mounts for your reservoirs. I don't have enough room for my hard drives. Okay. Fractal design R5. Look at all those hard drive cages. And you can fit your radiators and water cooling in here. No, I got a lot of hard drives, but I also have an EATX motherboard. Okay, I'm gonna try something here. Okay. Bear with me. You might want to stand clear. Ugh. Never actually tried this before. Okay. <laughs> it worked. Fractal design defined R6. You can fit all your radiators, a crap ton of hard drives, and it fits EATX. Dude, this is perfect. Nailed it. Yeah. Uh. Now back in the day, it was pretty easy to deal with problems like this as we're dealing with my boot loop happening here. You would just hit F8, boot into safe mode, go in there, uninstall whatever the culprit is and be up and running. Couple of problems with that. One, Windows 10 no longer makes it easy for you to get in to safe mode if you can't access the desktop. It's pretty simple. Usually you can go in there and just tell it to restart in safe mode or hold shift while clicking the restart or a bunch of different options but if you can't get into the damn operating system, what good is that Microsoft, whatever, the monkeys over there running the uh, Windows division clearly have never dealt with a problem like this. Now what's gonna happen here, and the reason why you're seeing me not touch anything is on the third failed boot, it's gonna automatically boot you into recovery options and that's how you can get into safe mode. If that wasn't working for you, then typically what you can do is when you see the little window circle going, you can just power cycle the PC, turn off the power supply, do that three times, and then you'll end up into safe mode. But what it's doing now is it's, you know, it says, please wait. That's how you know it's actually going into recovery options. That's where we're gonna get ourselves into safe mode. But you're not done there because I'm gonna show you a new layer to this problem that makes it just a little bit more redonkulous, if you will. Now, even here from the recovery menu, it's still kind of buried to get into safe mode. You're gonna click see advanced repair options. You're gonna go to troubleshoot. You're then gonna go to advanced options. You're then gonna go to, where is it? No, not start to prepare. See more recovery options. Then you're gonna click startup settings. Then it's gonna give you the option to go into safe mode, hit restart. Then it will restart into a menu where you chose what type of safe mode you wanna boot into, because there's different options. Safe mode with command prompt, safe mode with networking, safe mode with no networking, because basically each safe mode that you choose enables and disables various system services because sometimes the system service could be what's crashing, causing you a problem. And if that's trying to load in safe mode, then whatever. So we're gonna go ahead and just do enable safe mode with networking, which is number five. Hit five, and now we will boot into safe mode. This isn't gonna boot things like video drivers, and it's not gonna usually boot or load things like sound drivers. Nothing is freaking running. And it brings you right into Microsoft support, because we all know how useful that is. And what we're gonna do now is we are gonna go into add remove programs. Now we know the culprit is AMD Ryzen Master in my case anyway, because I didn't really show it. Maybe Phil might be able to see it, I don't know, in editing, but it actually told me AMD Ryzen Master.dll is what was actually causing the failure. And it was saying it couldn't load, exception, whatever. I don't remember what the exact error was. And here it is right here, AMD Ryzen Master. Now normally you just go in here and then click uninstall. And when you click uninstall, we get an error here. The Windows installer service could not be accessed. This can occur if Windows installer is not correctly installed. The irony on that, if the installer isn't installed correctly by Windows own installer, then install it using the Windows installer. Okay, so if you go down here into the Windows button, you click that and you just start typing services, you can actually go to the desktop app and see what services are running and not running. And if we go down here to W for Windows installer, right there, you can see it's not running. Now, if you right click that and say start, 
It then proceeds to tell you that Windows cannot start the Windows installer service on a local computer. Error 1804, the service cannot be started in safe mode. So now you're in safe mode where you can't uninstall anything, which is kind of the reason why we wanted to get into safe mode. So what do you do, Jay? How the hell do you get past this? Well, all you got to simply do, in our case anyway, was try and find where AMD Ryzen Master was installed. So we happen to know that the location is in our program files. There's the folder right there with AMD Ryzen Master and all that stuff. So all we had to do here was go in here and rename it to MS sucks monkey balls. And now restart your system. It should work at this point. You can restart your system, you'll get into the desktop, and then you can rename it back to AMD. If you do, you'll deal with this. But if you rename it back to AMD, then you can uninstall it. It should be able to uninstall also with the root folder named the way it is. But that's all we had to do. We just had to tell basically the startup services in the registry that it's trying to load something that's not there, so it just ignores it and moves on. This could easily be handled if the monkeys running Microsoft actually knew what the hell they were doing. Just another level and layer of why Windows 10 sucks and why videos like this even have to exist, but because we dealt with it, and I'm sure that people can learn from it, is why we made this quick and easy video. Now this isn't gonna help all problems, this only specifically helped the situation we were dealing with right now. Microsoft, you could, Windows 10 help, you can get the frick. This only helps when the program trying to launch is causing the problem. And obviously Ryzen Master couldn't launch because we're not running a Ryzen system. So that was the, the conflict there. So now we're back and running in the Windows desktop non-safe mode with a new folder. I'm gonna leave on here called MS Sucks Monkey Balls. Because this makes me happy. But yeah, it was, it was literally that simple. So guys, I'm gonna, when I come across these types of problems, I'll try and make these quick videos to help you guys out. Like I said, this will only work in the situation of leaving your phone not on silent while you're making a video. This won't work in all instances, but if it's a DLL or something like that that's causing the, the, the issue, then you can typically get into safe mode and at least delete those DLLs because deleting files works. You just can't uninstall anything. All right, guys, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.